Alrighty, so let's get started. So welcome to the Oh Hell No podcast. Tonight I have Christy Whitman. She is um, an author, <laughs> um, a celebrity coach and law of attraction expert. Um, she's a two-time New York bestselling author at that, right? So not just any old author. <laughs> And I love the name of this book, The Art of Having It All and Taming Your Alpha Bitch. I love that. And then we're going to talk about how to embrace your materialistic nature to reclaim your full spiritual power. I love that. So welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to talk with you tonight. Awesome. So I look away because I look at my questions that I have written down. So for all you people who think I'm like daydreaming or falling asleep, it's not. I'm just looking at my notes and I write too while I interview. So that's just what I do. So um, I want to ask you, tell me three things that you are passionate about. Oh, that's easy. I'm passionate what I do for a living as far as coaching and helping people shift their energy. I'm passionate about my family and I'm passionate about my well-being and working out and, you know, staying healthy. Nice. Okay. So when you were growing up, what did you think that you were going to do, um, you know, once you were able to get out on your own and make your own money? Well, when I was, I was pretty clear when I was in high school that I wanted to get into sales and marketing and I knew that I wanted to sell something that was consumable, you know, like, so I was clear, I didn't want to sell cars or I didn't want to sell TVs. You know, I wanted to sell consumable products. And it's funny because after college, I went um, immediately started working for a liquor company. So I don't know anything that was more consumable than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all love drinks. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So that's interesting. So you knew that you wanted to sell something um, and you wanted to sell something consumable or whatever. So you started selling drinks. How was that for you? Did you enjoy it? I did. I mean, it comes with a little bit of territory. I was, you know, I was in Chicago uh, in my early twenties and I had to drink all the time. And uh, so it was fun, you know, it's fun to be single and um, drinking in the city of Chicago. And yet um, my parents got kind of worried about me because as you drink a lot, you, t you tend to have a tolerance. So, you know, sometimes I would go over their house when I was visiting them and uh, I could drink a bottle of wine by myself and be fine. And they were like, oh my God, I, I think she's becoming an alcoholic. Um, Cause it was just one of those things that we would have meetings on Friday after, you know, Friday mornings at eight o'clock and people would, uh, suppliers would come in and they wanted us to taste the new tequila or a single malt scotch. So we would be almost doing shots of these kind of things at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's crazy. It was crazy. So what, sh what shifted and made you leave that field? Well, I, I went from there to then work for Pepsi Cola. And so I still was selling consumable products. Right. Um, but I got recruited from Pepsi Cola. Um, I, I went from a liquor company to a wine company. I got promoted within the liquor distributing company into a, supp a supplier position. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I got recruited from Pepsi Cola. So I thought it would be a really good opportunity to not only make more money, but to learn more of the marketing side of it because I was the marketing manager for big um, retailers like Target and Walmart and, um, and Kmart. And those kind of stores where I would go in and ask for displays and sell in displays and things like that. So I was selling soda. I went from alcoholic to non-alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to drugs. I, went, I became a pharmaceutical rep. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So my, my aunt, my great aunt used to say to me, you went from alcohol to non-alcohol and then you went to drugs. <laughs> so crazy. So you really liked marketing, like that was your thing, like yeah, getting products and being in that arena, you enjoyed that. Yeah, I did. I liked, I liked uh, have, doing sales and, you know, ha having responsibility and, and being able to kind of create my own success inside my company, having a territory that I would manage and be responsible for. And, and I did, it was, it was a good job to have, but then for me, it became about you know, it, 
just sales, just numbers, you know, I, I felt that I didn't have much, much passion for that after a while. It's like, is it really just about the numbers? And that's when I started cultivating, like, I felt like I, I don't have much passion here. I don't have much purpose here. And so I had to start cultivating that feeling of having passion and being on purpose. And that's when I became a author and a coach and speaker and and all that, because I didn't even know that this world existed and yet. I felt the energy of what it would feel like first before that even came into fruition. So how did that first happen? Like, what was the first thing that, okay, so you're in this job and you feel like, oh my God, I just don't feel like I'm, you know, doing purpose work or whatever. What happened to like push you into this purpose work stuff? Like, was it one event or was it someone that you met? Like, what was the transition? Well, I had been consistently feeling as though I was passionate and on purpose, even though I didn't know what the form would be. That was something that I would connect with energetically. I would start to, you know, like most of the time we feel like if I go do something, then I'll feel. Mm -hmm. And what I know to be true of being a law of attraction expert is that we have to feel in order to attract. And because I was feeling the lack of it, I didn't really know how, what passion and purpose felt like I needed to cultivate that inside of myself. So I was doing that consistently. And so something did pop through and that was my first book. Um, my first book, as I was meditating at night, which I do every night, um, I saw a vision in my meditation and it said, perfect pictures by Christy Whitman. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I've never written a book, right? So I went to sleep, rolled over, went to bed. And at 105 in the morning, I was woken up by a voice that was literally like almost like reading in my head. I knew it wasn't my voice and I couldn't turn it off. I couldn't stop it. And I was listening to what it was telling me. And I was like, wow, that's brilliant. I, I like that's helping me. So I got up and just put pen to paper and my hand just became independent of my own consciousness. It became like I was writing faster than I couldn't even think. <laughs> It was crazy. And so I just oh was God. like, hold my hand. <laughs> what is happening here? And after I read it, I was like, wow, that, that didn't come from my mind. And so I just kind of let it go, went back to bed. I was up for a good couple hours, went back to bed. Seven nights in a row, this happened. 105 in the morning, the exact timing, same thing. And now it was like by the second night, I'm like, okay, I'm getting up to journal the pen, just continue to write, write, write let my hand do what it needed to do, went back to bed. And so after the sixth or seventh day, I had just seen a, uh, an author come and speak in a community that I was in. And uh, I, I emailed her and I said, how do you get a book published? Cause I think I'm writing a book. And she said, go online and get a literary agent. And so I literally went on Google literary agent. And the first person that popped up, he happened to be a publisher and a literary agent. So I contacted him. He said, sure, hand me your, you know, send me your manuscript. I did. He accepted it. Like, I didn't know it was supposed to be hard. And so I did what I needed to do to finish the manuscript. And um, I got the book published. Wow. So I got, I had the book published and all my friends and family who were not the target audience for my book, they all bought it. Oprah wasn't calling. Right. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what do I do now? So I started speaking in spiritual bookstores and new thought churches. And, um, when I was speaking, people consistently were asking me, do you coach? Are you a coach? And I was like, coach, what do you mean? Like a football coach, a cheerleading coach? Cause I, this is 20 years ago. Right. right? So life coaching, it, although it was big in California, it, I mean, I was like, what? So I, I was like, well, just call me on the phone and I'll walk you through the con whatever you're needing my help in, I'll help you. So I was guiding people through with their energy and helping them change their mindset on things. And then they were calling me back going, oh my God, this is amazing. This manifested or that I got a promotion or, you know, this happened. And I loved the process of it. I was so passionate about the process of helping somebody else achieve their goals or dreams that I was like, that's what I want to pursue. And that's what I, I just continue to follow step-by-step step, this life of being a coach. That is crazy. Like <laughs> I live for moments like this. This is why I do this podcast. I love to hear stories like this. I heard another, one of my other guests, they also said the same thing about their book is like the book was just flowing through them. Like 
they don't even know. Well, they feel like, you know, God gave them the book and they were just, you know, there to write. Yes. And everything just came to them. So I heard that before. That's so amazing that you had that experience. So yeah, all of my books are now channeled that way. You know, even my new book that's coming out in April, The Desire Factor, you know, it's like this was completely channeled. It was just a complete, you know. Oh my gosh. Yes, that was the name of the book, The Desire Factor How to Embrace Your Materialistic Nature to Reclaim Your Full Spiritual Power. So I read the subtitle and not the main title sorry no worries. <laughs> yeah but oh my gosh that that, that that's like crazy so um I was gonna ask what made you decide to write a book but how could you not you know like that's like you have to you absolutely have to so when you wrote that book were you working um still for Pepsi-Cola or another company yeah, I was working for a pharmaceutical company. Yes. Yeah. And it's interesting because I've had my books come through, like the, my book, Quantum Success. Um, I was in the middle of the Mediterranean. We were literally in the middle of the ocean and I was on a cruise ship and my, I had my kid in one room and a kid in another room. My husband was in the bedroom. So I had to go into the bathroom and I put a bunch of stacks of, of towels so my butt wouldn't be so cold. And I literally sat down with a journal, a pen, and the book just came through me. And so, you know, all of my books have been a, a channel. And it's funny because, you know, when I had success with my first, um, the first book hitting the New York Times, um, my literary agent came back to me and was like, oh my gosh, we, what other book are you writing? What's, what's your next book? And I'm like, I don't know. It hasn't revealed itself, you right. know? And it's like, I can't just say, oh, I'm going to write a book about this, right? It literally comes through me and then I get to be the conduit. I get to, I get to be the, the vessel. So quantum energy mastery, that is something that you do. Tell us about that. So everything is energy. We know that from quantum physics, from modern science, and that when you really start to look at your life and start taking responsibility for your life, you, you learn that you can master your own energy and the way, the only thing that we really ever have control in this lifetime is our own consciousness and our own consciousness consists, consists of our language that we use, our words that we choose, the thoughts that we think, the perspective or the beliefs that we have, the emotions that we feel or don't, and then the actions that we take. And so when you can be in alignment with what you do want and how you do want to feel, and make sure all five of those actions are in that flow of where you want to go, then you're mastering your energy. And when you're doing that, because as within, so without, when you're doing that, then the universe literally starts to match what energy you're giving out. That's basis of law of attraction. So it's all based on mastering your own energy. If you're feeling resistance, be able to accept the resistance, understand the resistance and letting it go, coming back into more of a aligned, allowing state. And when we're pushing up against something, then we're not mastering our own energy. So energy mastery is everything. Yeah, I'm so fascinated by that. So how long have you been meditating? 25 years. So that, that's interesting subject too, because when I was living in Chicago, you know, being a party girl and selling liquor and wine, um, I, I found myself moving to, I made a lateral move with my, with my company for the latest bad guy. I always attracted nice bad guys. Um, if that's even a <laughs> nice bad guy. Yeah, guys. absolutely. Um, I get it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I moved to California and the only person I had met before I broke up with the latest bad guy, um, because he was cheating on me, um, was a woman that was a hairdresser. And so I went to go get my hair cut and this woman, Janine was just so effervescent. It was like, she had bubbles of joy popping out of her. I mean, I just, I kept looking at her and I'm like, God, she's so different than anybody I've ever met. And finally, I just being as blunt as I am, I just said to her, I go, okay, what do you do? And she knew exactly what I meant. And she started laughing. She goes, well, I meditate. Now, Keisha, I was not born like a Buddhist. And I was not born with my parents talking about meditation. And so when she said meditate, I had this image of like a guy, you know, a really old guy with white hair, the long beard, 
in a robe sitting on a, you know, a, a mountain somewhere oming to death. Right. right. I, I, that was my image. I'm like meditating what, you know? And so she's, so we start talking about what that was and how connected she feels and how it's literally changed her life and that she's got this meditation teacher. And I'm like, I'm going to need her number. And so I was dialing her. Remember this is 20, 25 years ago. So we had the really big phones. I was like dialing her as I was walking out of the salon, um, you know, leaving her a message. Like I got to get together with you. And I went to her house and here in her house, she's got all these statues of angels and lots of candles and incense and clinky clanky music going on. And I'm thinking, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> and then she has me go into her family room right? And not sit on chairs, but we sit on the ground on a cushion. And I'm thinking, oh my God. And then she said something to me that literally cracked me open like a peanut. She, she said, you create your own reality. Now, this grit, right? And this was a time where there was no internet and there wasn't a lot of coaches out there. There was no podcast, right? So hearing this for the first time, it opened something. I went, that's true. I don't know. Something deep in me was like, that's true. I didn't know how it was true, but I knew that. And I'm like, tell me more. And how, how do I create my own reality? And then she said, your thoughts, you're either repelling things from you or attracting things to you based on your thoughts. And again, I was like, how, right? Yeah, I was just there. Was, it was like an opening. And then my logical brain kicked in and went, how I want to know more. And then she said, well, by the thoughts you think, and I'm thinking, well, my thoughts are my thoughts. Like what I think about something is just real. Like I knew I could change my mind. I don't want to wear this. I want to wear that. I don't want to go here. I want to go there. I could change my mind, but my thoughts, like I could choose, choose how I'm thinking about something. I, I just was so disconnected from that concept. And so she said, listen, I want you to just go home. Don't even start to meditate. I just want you to start paying attention to your thoughts. Come back and see me next week. So I started paying attention to my thoughts for the first time in my life. And I couldn't believe how negative I was. Mm -hmm. Like I was so berating to myself. I was so judgmental and critical, not only of myself, but everybody I knew and God and everything just constantly in a a boxing match. And I remember telling my girlfriend, Dawn, who I've known since seventh grade, I said to her, I'm like, God, I'm realizing I'm so negative. And she said to me, she goes, you were the one of those most positive people I know. What do you think you're <laughs> negative? I'm like, well, you should be inside my head. Right. Like, the words I spoke were positive and uplifting and, you know, hopeful and, but inside my head, oh, there's a whole different thing going on here. And so that was what I had to really you know, start making peace with, was my own inner connection with myself. Wow. So today, do you feel like every, cause like I, I read about this stuff and I know that they say, you know, you can't stop yourself from having negative thoughts or thoughts that, you know, might not be what you want, but you have to have them, accept them, let them go, whatever. So yeah. today, do you feel like you're never having a negative thought or do you just <laughs> feel like you're <laughs> you're able to control what you think about and how you you know go through life with what you expect to happen for yourself yeah well the biggest thing for me is really connecting with the energy that i want to connect with because when i'm connecting and bringing in a more positive energy it affects my thoughts it affects my emotions i've had to do a lot of inner work where a lot of times what we don't understand about the way we, things work is that our minds actually create a automatic response with our emotions and our emotions then create more thoughts. So if we're feeling anger or we're feeling resentful or frustrated or any fear, worry, any kind of lower level emotion, that those emotions are gonna create thoughts of negativity, are gonna create more fear thoughts. And those fear thoughts are going to create more fear, feelings of fear, right? They feed on each other. Right. And so what I got to learn and understand is that I had to isolate those emotions, those emotional imprints and release that so that I can then choose a better feeling thought and let that stick. Otherwise, if you don't get to the root cause of why you're thinking a thought that way, 
and you're just in a negative space, then it just keeps coming back. My, my life's work literally for 25 years now. And what I understood back then, and I now still teach to this day is that if we feel bad, we're coming from a perspective of lack. Any perspective of lack, insufficiency, shortage consciousness, separation, anything like this causes us to feel bad. So any negative emotion is coming from a perspective of lack. If you shift your perspective of lack and you have more of a perspective of abundance, then you start feeling better. You feel joy and excitement and appreciation and you have more thoughts that then of course feed on each other. So do I have moments of where I get negative or do I have moments of where I'm like focused on what I don't want? Yeah, I'm human, we all do. But I'm able to recognize when I say, well, I don't wanna, wait, okay, what do I want instead? I don't wanna focus on what I don't want. I wanna focus on what I do want right? And then why I want it and then get into the feeling place of having it. And then once I do that, now I'm on the side of abundance because if you look at it like a spectrum on one side is lack, the other side is, a, is abundance. In the middle is satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Satisfaction feels good. And it's the tipping point into abundance. So as long as I can come back to, okay, I'm going through a tough time right now something, you know, shifting in my life. What are the positive aspects? What can I look for that I can appreciate and be grateful for that tips me into feeling good, which creates momentum of thought and momentum of emotions. And then, you know, creates my reality from there. Just as easy as if I get a negative thought and I don't catch it in time and I can go down a momentum trail and start feeling bad. And then all of a sudden I'll catch myself and I'm like, where have I been for the last hour? I've been in like negative place. Right. And then I just go, wait, shift. I could just, what am I grateful for? What could I appreciate? What, what do I want? What, how do I want to feel? And then connect with that feeling. Wow. So it's just, I have a lot of tools now yeah. because I've been doing it a long time. And that's what most people don't understand is that it's not that you, there's something wrong with you, right? Everybody has negative thoughts. It's just, do we have the tools to apply when we do have them so we can shift them? I like it. Do you meditate every day? Yes, usually. And, and the days I don't, it makes a big difference. So mm -hmm. if I don't meditate during in the morning or I don't do it in the afternoon, I usually meditate at night. But if I'm feeling off during the day, I'll stop and just close my eyes for a couple of minutes. I mean, it doesn't even take just to connect with a higher energy. It only takes a couple of minutes. You don't have to be meditating three hours a day, right? So um, I'll just stop and connect with how I want to feel. And then I feel energized and I feel like I want to move on and, you know, but it's every day I'm doing some kind of energy work. Wow. That's so amazing. I love energy. <laughs> I really, everything do. is energy. So yeah, I do. I feel like I'm really good at reading people's energy. And a lot of times it puts me in a, I want to say a negative place, but I feel like I'm really good at reading people's energies and I know when stuff's off and right. um, I go off of energy. And if the energy is not right, I don't want to be there. I'm not interested. Like that's just yeah. not for me, you know? And I find more and more that um, I'm probably going to be spending a lot of time by myself. Because <laughs> a lot of people's energies is just, you know what, effed up. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. I'd rather you know, stay where the energy is good than to go around just one person with funky ass energy. Well, here's the fix to that. Okay. Because you're right. We are energy, like we're physical beings, right? But we are energy beings too. Mm -hmm. And so when you really think about the core aspects of being an energy master is that we are energy receivers. We have to receive an energy. The cells in our bodies have receptor cells, receptor sites, where we're receiving in energy. So if we're coming out depleted and we go to the grocery store and there's someone next to us that's given off a funky vibe, we're going to be picking up on that vibe. But if you go into that grocery store and you've already filled yourself up with success energy or abundance or joy, and you feel like every single cell has just been filled up, right? Every receptor site is just soaking in that energy of joy. When you go into that grocery store, now you're exuding the energy 
instead of being influenced by the energy because you're coming in filled up, not depleted where you're going to be sucking. It's like some, you get around people and they feel like they're just sucking your energy. It's like, right. It's like, if you're filled up and you realize where your source comes from of energy, you could constantly fill yourself up so that you're not being sucked. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you're, you're an energy receiver. And then we have to be able to have enough for ourselves so that we are containing that energy. So it's not like we're bringing it in and giving it away. We're containing that energy. So we have enough love, enough joy, whatever it is for ourselves. And then we give from the overflow right now. That's what we're transmitting out into the world. And then that's what then comes back to us. So that what we're vibrating out, we start attracting more people that resonate, resonate with our vibration. So we find ourselves not attracting as many negative people. Got it. Okay. So you have to fill yourself up with this positive and good energy and the negative energy forces will kind of shy away from you and you will yeah. attract more like energy, like people. Exactly. Got it. Okay. I love that. So the desire factor is built around seven, seven universal principles, right? Mm -hmm. So for each of these principles, I want you to just give me a nugget. For okay. Each. Okay. So it's important to say that there's been lots of people have talked about how you create desires, how you manifest them. This again was downloaded from, from the channel from the council mm -hmm. and it's seven steps it's actually step 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 and you know it's kind of like a lock right if you have a, a, a lock that you have three numbers and you have 12 32 16 right if you go 16 32 you're doing it in the wrong order the lock won't open right so it's important that you do them in these these uh, steps step by step so the first one is alignment and that's where you're focused on the energy that you do want Many of us are focused on what we don't want. We talked about lack and limitation, all that. We want to focus on alignment and alignment with our divine self, the one that's breathing us, our life partner. That divine self is the one that gave us that desire. So a lot of times we receive the desire, we think, get excited about something, and then we talk ourselves out of it, getting us out of alignment with that desire. Yes. Who am I to do that? Oh, there's so many other people doing that. Why am I important? How am I ever going to succeed? All of this stuff gets us out of alignment and alignment is the first principle. Now I could coach people for years just on the concept of alignment and getting them in alignment, mm -hmm. right? Alignment is key and it's a, it's a practice. That's what we talk about energy mastery, right? The second principle is focus. We all have free will. Nobody can insert their opinion or their choices on us, right? We can still choose where we put our focus. And so we have the power of choice. We have the power of focus. And if we're aligned and we're choosing to focus on what we want, how we want the outcome to be, the images that we want to see in our head, the words that we say, the feelings, all the things, when we choose to focus on the desire manifesting and how that's going to feel, now we're so much more powerful than when we're focused on what we don't want. So focus is the second principle. Okay. The principle of joyful expectancy mm -hmm. is the third principle, meaning that when you're expecting something, when you're seeing something, when you're wanting something, do it joyfully right? Most people expect the worst to happen, or they talk about what they're worried about. We have to think about the desire that we want and joyfully get excited about it as if it's already happening. Cause that then leads into the third, the fourth principle, which is the principle of having, you cannot attract what you want. If you're in a place of lack, if you're wanting anything and you're feeling the lack of it, you cannot have it. You're not in the place of having it and having it is the place where you're a vibrational match to it. So it was the example I gave in the beginning when I said I didn't have purpose and passion. I was not feeling that. And I knew that if I, I'm coming from lack, if I'm not feeling something, if I'm feeling lonely, I don't feel connected. If I'm feeling the lack of money, then I'm not in abundance, right? So it's, if we're coming from lack, we can't attract what we do want. I wasn't feeling purpose and passion. So I started cultivating it. So I had it and then was able to attract it. So the feeling of having, that's when you're a vibrational match to what you want. Right. So like, for example, I'm full of all of this 
purposeful thinking, the, you know, like wanting to help people, how can I share this? And then maybe you'll attract what you're supposed to do to fulfill your purpose. So I feel like we're all kind of looking for that. That's why I started this podcast, right? To find what, what am I supposed to be doing? What's my contribution to the world, right? So let me talk to people who are doing these things and, and see, you know, because I'm filled with this um, desire to, you know, help and, you know, be like productive. So like, how can I do that? You know, yes. so you guys are coming to me <laughs> yes, and sharing exactly. wisdom with everyone. Right. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. So that's the principle of having, and then once you have it, you got to love it. Yeah. Right. You have it based on an energy. You got to love that idea of it. You got to love that desire. You got to love the feeling of having it. The principle of loving love is the highest vibration in the universe. Love is the master vibration. Love is literally what created heaven and on, on earth here. So, you know, the heavens, the galaxies, love is what birthed everything into being. And so love is the highest vibration. Once you have all that, then you have to practice the principle of surrender because we have in our idea of our minds, what's something going to look like, you know, if we have a picture in our minds of what to expect, we have to surrender, surrender to the timing, surrender to the details, to surrender to the how, you know, let all of that go, knowing that you've got a co-creative partner that you're aligned with, you're already focused on what you want, you energetically feel the essence of it, you're loving what you say, at some point you got to surrender. And then the last part, which is the most important part for us as the physical human being is the actions. You're never going to get 10 steps ahead of what your desire is, but you're going to get evidence of that very next step. And then it's up to us to take that next step, to call the person, make the offer on the house, to make the first recording of a podcast, to start the first sentence in a book, to go on that, to a, that party, you know, whatever it is, we have to take the first step and we'll always be revealed what that first step is. Yeah. I love this. Christine. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Oh my gosh. Like we have to give away one of your books. Like I have to do that. I have to do a book giveaway. Love so it. I always feel like my authors, I buy the book because I want to support the author and I give it away. So that's how I do it. You know, I love it. <laughs> I, I love it. Well, yeah. go to, go to the desirefactor.com because when you do, when you pre-order it, you're going to get a ton of meditations from the council. You're going to get all the um, processes and the meditations and the, in the work stuff um, in the book that, so you can integrate it. Plus you're going to get a four week group session with the council when the book comes out. So there's a lot of goodies that you get for, you know, getting a $15 book, um, from the desirefactor.com. I'm doing that for my damn self. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm doing that when we hang up. So I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to give away a book when it comes out to someone who is watching, because I feel like there's always someone who a book needs to connect with and maybe $15 is hard for them right now. So the universal, you know, find them and, and give it to them. Um, so I love doing that. Um, so let's see, I got so caught up in your, your stuff. I'm like lost here. <laughs> um, I caught up in the energy of all of it. Yes. I love it. I love this stuff. This, I live for episodes like this because it really speaks to my soul. Like, I just feel like, I feel like I'm on the verge of my own, like, energetic explosion, like where I'm, you know what I mean? Yes. So I do. well, just, let me, let, let, let me offer this because we talked about the five things that you can do with your own energy, with your own consciousness. And people have asked me for years and years and years, like, where's the first place to start if you really want to master your own energy or even apply the universal laws. And I always, for years have said, you got to watch your words. So they would say, well, what do you mean? And so I created a program. It's a free program that anybody can go and take. It's a 30 day video program. I highly recommend you do it if you're loving this. And it's called watchyourwords.com. 
-hmm. And every day you get a two to four minute video. And in there, I tell you three things, the word or phrase that you absolutely want to eliminate from your vocabulary, why, and what to say instead. So I'll give you a quick example. When COVID hit and everybody was in lockdown, right? Everybody from professional athletes to celebrities, to the people next door, to even my children were saying, I miss, I miss going to school. I miss playing football. I miss going to get a pedicure. I miss going out to dinner, right? And when we say I miss, it pulls down our energy because it's a perspective of something's missing. So we're lacking something, which lack always feels bad. But if you just shift the phrase to, I look forward to, or I appreciate, it's a whole different ball game. So one day I remember it was months after everything was still locked down. And I said, I heard myself say, I miss going out for dinner with my husband. And I went, whoa, no, I look forward to. I look forward to when the restaurants open up again and I can go on a date with my husband. And what that did is it opened up my energy and I was like, oh, where would we go? Yeah. So then I started thinking about all these different places that I'd want to go. I'm like, if the first restaurant that I want to go on a date with my husband would be oh, catch 30, catch 44. And then I'm like, oh, do we go alone? Just the two of us? Or do we bring another couple? Like, you know, now I'm in creation mode. And then I'm like, Ooh, what am I going to wear? Right. Right. I, I got to pick my is. outfit. Right. And you feel good and you're attracting yes. all these great thoughts. I love that. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm going there too. <laughs> that was I figure I figure you'd appreciate it. So yes, I yeah. love that. So um, oh, let's see, let's see. So are there any struggles that you face with your business or anything that keeps you up at night as an entrepreneur while helping other people? You know, and also how do you keep your self balanced and in check when you're helping other people with their energies and you know helping balancing them out like so yes yeah, so i, I want to just say this i've i've been doing this work for 25 years and in that 25 year period i've had my sister who committed suicide mm -hmm. i've been in about one hundred sixty thousand dollars in debt i went through a divorce i had a loss of a job and i had my two-month-old baby who is now 10 years old and he's totally fine. But when he was two months of age, he nearly lost his life and had to have open heart surgery. So these are all, and there's been times where, you know, being in my own business for 15 years where business started dipping and I had to restructure things, I had to let people go, you know, times where I was like in total fear that, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to make it? And so with all of these times, I mean, extreme situations, I've been able to focus on what I wanted to feel the way I wanted to feel all the principles that I talk about in the desire factor, you know, really aligning myself and, and really focusing and getting into the feeling of having and all of those different, those tools, those principles, those processes, those universal laws, they work. And it's what carried me through not turning a situation, but allowed me to springboard from those situations into a better life. And, you know, it's, it's just absolutely necessary that we take control, that we master the one thing that we do have control over, and that's our consciousness. So right now I can currently say, no, there's nothing keeping me up at night really, because I've literally got into a place of energy mastery. Are there things or thoughts or, you know, contrast that shows up? Yes, there always will right? There's, there's always something that will come into our experience that we don't necessarily like. Um, I had the other night, it was amazing. I it didn't take much. I was two steps out of my house and there was a woman and her daughter that we had just heard about in the neighborhood that got COVID. Mm -hmm. So they're supposed to be in quarantine because they literally just got it. And here I'm walking out with my house, out of my house with my husband and my dog, ready to take him on a walk. And here comes the mother and the daughter and they're walking with their dog. They've got masks on, but then the, the mother grabbed a poopy doggy bag, you know, from mm -hmm. the community thing. So I'm like, she's not only walking outside when she's not supposed to be, she's right. touching community property mm -hmm. that she could be spreading it. Yep. Right. So seeing something like that infuriated me, I got upset. I'm like, how could she, there was a lot of judgment and I had to just center myself back let go of my anger and a process the anger and process the energy 
and come back to myself going, I'm in well-being. You know, it's like, what, what can I do to, to rectify this situation? Is that my responsibility? Do I need to call and warn people? I mean, I went through this whole thing. That contrasting situation that I witnessed, I brought to a place where I'm like, oh my gosh, I was about to go over to that thing and grab a bag. Thank God I saw them. Now I knew not to go over there and grab a bag. Right. Because oh if, if it had been less than a minute, they would have been gone. And I could have been the person that grabbed that bag that yep. she just touched. You would have grabbed the bag and then you'd be like, oh, there's something in my eye. My God, what is that? Oh, <laughs> and then you've got COVID. So blessing, right? Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, that was a gift. Yeah. That was oh a gift. Gosh, people are so reckless. Jeez. Well, and then it was, I called it a one, two punch because that happened. And so we decided not to go that way for our walk. We went this way for our walk. And as we were coming back, the little, the dog that my dog, my dog has a crush on, there's a female dog. He's a boy dog. Um, Her parents don't ever put a leash on her. Right. And she's a puppy and she's a Bernese doodle. She's huge. And so the dog saw my dog who's on a leash and all calm and runs over across the street where people are coming in and out of our community and gets tangled up in my dog's leash. And the parents are like, hmm. you know, and she, <laughs> she continued on her walk, totally ignoring the situation. And our dogs are like entangled, oh my right? God. And I, we had to let go of my dog's leash in order to untangle their dog or else she was going to get hurt. Right. And there comes a car and my dog's, you know, in the middle of the street, it was like all this dram- dramatics that didn't have to happen, right? So the initial thing is like, how could you be so careless? Put your dog on a leash, right? It was like, these things happen. People do stupid stuff. Right. People don't think, right? And we are people. I do stuff that I don't think sometimes, right? It's like, but do I berate myself and judge myself? And it's like, okay, I had a human moment. I had a moment of like, I just, I don't know where I was on that one forgive myself, have compassion for myself, compassion for other people, um, because contrast happens and, and yeah. people do funny things, especially yep. when they're out of alignment. <laughs> yeah. And you just got a woosa and yeah. <laughs> let it go. Sure. So what has been your greatest life lesson to date? Oh, you know, for me, it's the core of just really um, releasing the perspective of lack and limitation, because it is really all energy. And when we can just let go of a lack thought and choose a different thought and and be able to have and hold on to a different energy stream, Mm -hmm. it, it makes life is just so different when we really get that we are the masters of our, our energy, right. And masters of our domain. I'm thinking of Seinfeld. Um, but when we're like, you know, we really do have mastery over ourselves, over our thoughts, over our emotions. I mean, that has been so far my greatest life lesson is that, and, and really learning how to become an energy master. Wow. That's good. So are you married now? Or- I am. Okay. Yeah. So we've been married 13 years together, 14. We have two boys, a 10 and 11 year old. And mm-hmm. yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. So do you think that um, mastering all of the, these things has helped you be a better spouse. Are you more able to bring it down? It's, it's helped every aspect of my life. It's helped me be a better parent. It's helped me be a better daughter. It's helped me be a better spouse, a better coach, a better healer, a better author, a better friend, a better neighbor, a better human being. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have to share with us an oh hell no moment, right? Because this is the oh hell no podcast. <laughs> yes, it so is. We want to know um, of an oh hell no moment that you've experienced that taught you something or changed your perspective on something. When I was said the oh hell no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. You have to had had that thought in your head like, oh, hell no. Like, yes, yeah. not be happening. I got a me. perfect one for you. <laughs> okay, good. So. So my mother-in-law, who um, likes to make everything about her, right? Um, she came over to our house uh, one year for Mother's Day. We invited her over. My sister-in-law had just become a new mom. And I had my two little boys. And my husband wanted to have everybody over for like a Mother's Day brunch. So my husband's making the breakfast. 
And my mother-in-law looks down at my two children and she says, today is grandma's day. Today, you're celebrating me. And I went, oh, no, no. And she looked at me and it was in my head. I was thinking, oh, hell no. Right. And, and I go, oh, no, no, no. And, and she said, excuse me. And I said, he and she are celebrating you. You're their mother. They're celebrating me. I'm their mother. This is not just your day. Valerie is now a mother. Right. I am a mother. We get to share this day. All of us are being celebrated. Mm-hmm. It's a celebration of mothers. And she goes, is there a problem? And I said, no, not if you're willing to share this day. <laughs> oh my God. What did she say? So she goes, oh. And she just turned around and walked upstairs. I'm like, oh, oh hell no. <laughs> So how did the day plan out? Like, was it smooth? Did she- oh yeah, it was fine. It was fine. Yeah, it was, it was good. And, but I was proud of myself that I stuck up for myself because, you know, it's like my kids are going to be confused. Oh, mother's day is all about, you know, oh, grandma right. Nicole. No, it's not. It's about your mother. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. I can't. <laughs> the mother-in-laws, they always try us, honey. My husband, my husband's over there cooking and he's hearing this conversation. I'm seeing him go, oh, right. right. He's like, oh, hell no. Because right? <laughs> I'm not afraid to speak my mind. Right. And so he's just like, oh, oh so. my God. So <laughs> well, it was such a pleasure having you on the podcast today. I have to tell you, I um, saw something online that said um, at the first of January, um, get a jar and write down every good thing that happens to you all year long and, you know, ball it up and put it in the jar. And at the end of the year, go through all of the good things and read that happened to you. So I have to say my number one is interviewing you. You're my first oh. interview for 2021 and um, you're going in my jar because oh. I really love this interview. I enjoyed it. And I think that people are going to get a lot from it. So thank you for being oh. here. <laughs> so touched thank you Keisha I appreciate you thank you I'm happy to go in your jar (laughs) yes you will so tell everybody where they can look for your new book um once again because we said it earlier and it'll flash on the screen I'll make sure that we have it but also tell us again where we can go to find all the helpful information learn about your books and purchase your book when it comes out awesome thank you so the desire factor the desire factor.com is the first one. And then the other one I was telling you about the 30 day program is watch your words and it's plural. So watch your words.com. Yeah. As you see, I'm writing it down, right guys? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I need to watch my words. <laughs> <laughs> it's very different than watch your mouth. I used to get that as a kid. All the, you better watch your mouth, right? It's yeah. like, watch your words. Yes, definitely. All right. 